With every fresh series of Bite Size Daily, we are really keen to incorporate new technology and use um, new innovations to make the series even better. The concept of clogs was a beautiful piece of creative synergy. The first edition of Bite Size Daily came about in a really quick way. We had to kind of come together really fast to produce something in response to the pandemic. But the second series of Bite Size Daily, we had more time. The more time it meant we could be a bit more creative. We could use some of the most innovative technology that we had available. So we talked to Doc10 about creating a new virtual set and we came up with the concept of that and that became something that looked really um, fresh and new and exciting. When I first started chatting with, with Dan and the team over at the BBC about the potential for a second series of Bite Size, we were all really enthused. We wanted the set to be a much larger scale, we wanted it to feel a lot bigger than it did in the first series. And we also wanted to introduce some, some new technologies. You know, we sketched out some very early sort of primitive shapes and talked about how we could move the talent around the location without having to physically move the talent on set. And so we came up with a space that we felt suited the brief. And once we'd come up with the, the overall structure, we then started adding the colours and the branding walls and uh, the, the pieces behind it that, that made it feel and look very bite-sized. But it was at that point where, from Doc 10's perspective, we wanted to start uh, and introduce the idea of some more technical innovation. And, and it was around that time that Dan and I started talking about motion capture. I remember the conversation we had with Doc 10 where they said, we've got this set. We've also got some technology called motion capture that you might like to use. And immediately my kind of creative, sparky, kind of excitable juices came to the fore and I thought, great, let's see what else we can do to make Bite Size Daily feel even more fresh and new and exciting for our audience. Right, before we get started, let me introduce you to our maths pros who will be helping us out today with this lesson. First, it's our robot stuffed with knowledge, it's Clogs. Greetings and thank you, Lindsay. I am indeed stuffed with knowledge. When we started to think about what kind of character and what kind of look and feel Clogs would have or any new motion capture character would have, we wanted something that felt universal and would appeal to a broad range of our, our audience, boys and girls, particularly we had to think about what they would be interested in and what they would um, like and watch. We can use what we know about times tables to help us with a calculation to work out the size of something. There's a long line of media kind of TV robots or film robots who are smart and um, kind of academically brilliant but actually not particularly worldly wise. It's not a completely new concept in terms of the editorial, but in terms of the look and feel, we felt like a robot would have um, a broad appeal to a broad range of our audience. Hi again, Clogs. Now, have you got a challenge for us? Affirmative. I am going to test your ability to catch the positive trains. I will show you two trains with feelings on them. Can you choose the positive train? We had sort of two different design pro processes with, with Clogs. We had our internal design process, which is myself and the team sort of designing clogs from a technical point. There's the other side of it, which is what do the BBC want? How do we make clogs look good enough to be in a production on, on screen? I think there's maybe seven or eight different shots that we showed of completely different robot designs. This is where we started off. We were looking at, at just overall shapes and then we were looking at silhouettes. We then pushed that along to try to get an idea of colours and even characteristics, you know, that some of these robots, you can, you can get an idea of, of the personality from the stills. This was the design that they liked the most, the colours, the, the shapes. It was then a case of sort of honing down into that design as to what the BBC wanted. What's the answer, Clogs? Listening and speaking are connected because by listening carefully, you will respond appropriately. So we had this, this sort of beautifully crafted um, learning space, this virtual studio environment. And we also had Clogs the robot, the designed animated little character that we'd developed. But of course, what we'd not managed to do at this point yet was to combine what we were doing with the virtual studio technology alongside what we'd developed with the motion capture technology. The innovation then sort of moved towards being around how you could combine those two elements and make them work in a, in a robust fashion. So we had the set. We had the technology, what we then needed was somebody who could bring clogs to life. And we wanted somebody who um, understood our audience and can um, deliver our script, but also bring the script to life in a kind of fun, 
entertaining and slightly uh, kind of off the cuff way. We're sending festive love all around the world. Warwick Brownlow Pike seemed to be the ideal person to do this. You know, he'd been Dodge, he'd worked on CBBC, he knew the audience. And Warwick seemed to be really excited about trying this technology for the first time as well. He wanted to bring his performance and personality to the character, but also work with the technology to see where he could take that. They're the trackers, basically. You know, inside the, uh, when I see it inside the, um, inside the pockets. Oh, sorry. Go for a walk. Sorry. So I think Dan thought that because of my previous experience with CBBS and CBBC shows, I would know the tone that they needed for clogs. So he could be cheeky and he could ad lib a bit with the other presenters who I've worked with all before. And with my experience on all those shows and live in CBBC, they just knew that I could achieve that. The suit is very tight, it's a lycra suit. And actually I expected to turn up and have a suit with white ping pong balls all over it. But this is like state of the art. It has pockets all the way up the sleeve. And inside those pockets, out the legs and up the body, inside those pockets are the trackers. So those trackers, when I move, Clogs does the exact same movement. There's no rendering afterwards. Whatever I do is, is on screen in real time. Greetings, I am Clogs, naked. <laughs> this is how we do it. I also wear a big helmet that is a 3D printed helmet on my head that has a kind of like a cage, a bar that comes out front with a phone that tracks my eyes. So, so when I blink and stuff, Clogs blinks at the exact same time. When I turn my head, Clogs head turns. Now, the funny thing is my body shape, thankfully, isn't the same form as Clogs because he's about three and a half, four foot, has a massive head and has quite a short body. So Clogs' mouth is like up here. His belly is out here. <laughs> so, you know, his head is way up here. Communicating for different purposes. There are three main parts to clogs. First part is the, the motion capture suit. Uh, all the sensors are on the suit itself, so there are no cameras around, which means that the performer can literally go wherever they want to go and any movements they want to do, they can do. Second part is the facial capture, so that's record, I think it's 27 points of the face, so you've got nose, you've got cheekbones, you've got mouth curl, you've got eyebrows and eyes. We pre-rig the suit with the sensors and put all of the sort of suit innards and the computers and all that sort of thing in a rucksack. So all you have to do is connect the rucksack to the suit and all of that is done and ready to go. So essentially all this is doing is getting the tracking data of all the limbs. Actual clogs is built through the, the engine further down the line. So then in that engine, you can then levitate him, move him around, position him in the actual set. Prior to anyone being in the suit, we have to take exact dimensions. You can see them listed there. So body height, foot length, shoulder height, shoulder width, elbow span, wrist span, arm span, hip height, hip width, knee height, ankle height, and uh, the shoe thickness, because it is really down to the millimeters. So you can see this links directly with the number of sensors in the body. So you can see we've got one head, four down each arm. We've got the pelvis, the sternum, down the legs and the feet. So say if the suit had been centered up slightly wrong, one of these would appear red. So I know exactly which bit of the suit to target and a check on the sensor. So if I was a little bit worried about some of the movement of clogs, what I could do is zoom in on a specific body part, which then would tell me, you know, is this foot moving in a natural way in this model? And if not, it means there could be a problem with the sensor. So while he's live and doing his thing, I'm mostly watching this model and clogs at the same time to make sure those sort of two worlds are marrying up. And he looks as natural as clogs can be. I'm actually on a completely different plane to the presenters. The presenters are stood ahead of me and facing out. So I am looking at them, I actually have a pillar in front of me, so I can't see them, they can't see me. They are looking at a lighting stand with Clogs' face and talking to that as an inanimate object. So it's quite hard for them, you know, to get the vibe, know what, what he's up to, where he's moving, because he moves around a lot, he may be looking around. And then I can see them because I work with three monitors in front of me, and they're kind of in place of camera one, the jib shot, and camera two. And above that, I have my auto cue, so I can keep a constant eye on where we are in the script. Because we're using such state-of-the-art technology, I think that the possibilities of what clogs can do are endless. Initiating daily download. In our first lesson, we are going to use our knowledge of units of length, multiplication and scaling to solve maths problems. Obviously, we worked really closely with Doc10 and, and their teams to develop clogs. It was a very strong partnership and, and I don't think, you know, we. We couldn't have done it without them, and equally, they couldn't have 
been able to use the technology that they had at their disposal without our kind of editorial ideas. So it was a really lovely kind of collaborative way of working with Doc 10. I really enjoyed developing the character of Clogs and you know creating the character from scratch. Usually I work with puppets, so I'm used to creating characters, but never before have we created a character where you see the entire thing. With puppets, they end at the waist. And to get that visual language, create the language of Clogs to, that the audience can then like latch onto and you know they know that oh that's how he moves and it'd be weird if someone else stepped in because they would then go oh he doesn't he doesn't normally do that kind of thing he's not that fluid you know he's stiff and, and robot like maybe I feel quite privileged to have been able to work on the second series of Bite Size the development of Clogs and the way that editorially he's sort of scripted to both entertain and educate we've learned so much during the development that um, we're very very excited about where Clogs can go I'm really proud of what we've produced on Bite Size, particularly given all the restrictions. You get to the end and you're like, we did it, we managed to do that, and it looked great. I guess the, one of the prime things with Clogs is that it keeps Bite Size really current and really new and really exciting. So we've added this kind of extra level of, of blue chip to what is already a really robust product. Clogs is a new way to keep the learning objectives um, taught in a fresh way and keep the audience enticed and, and enhanced what we're already doing but in a way that I don't think anybody else is, is doing, certainly within the BBC at the moment, but educationally, it's a really unique tool. Potential for, for this to go on and become um, a mainstay of BBC education is, is something that, that I believe is inevitable. I think everyone's kind of fallen in love with clogs and they've fallen in love with the technology that helps clogs come to life. And I think we're all invested in making clogs even better um, from an editorial point of view and even better from a visual and technological point of view going forward. Bye everyone! Oh, please check my boots.